March 1998. <clears throat> we'll deal with the five mental faculties. <clears throat> In the previous talks, I explained to you the purpose of Vipassana meditation is for liberation of a mind from mental defilements and uh, all kinds of uh, suffering. <clears throat> then I briefly explain to you how the mind can be liberated from mental defilements. <clears throat> As a result, how one can be a great man in accordance with the teaching of the Buddha. <clears throat> As I explained to you, to liberate mind from all mental defilements. We have to develop mindfulness meditation <clears throat> in accordance with the discourse of Mahasiddhi Patana Sutra expounded by the omniscient Buddha himself. <clears throat> As you know, there are four kinds of mindfulness as taught by the Buddha. <clears throat> The first one is the mindfulness body. The second is the mindfulness of feeling or sensation. Mindful the third is the mindfulness of consciousness. The fourth is the mindfulness of phenomena. <clears throat> So the Buddha taught us these four kinds of mindfulness. We need not to, we need not choose any mindfulness <clears throat> as our meditation because <clears throat> The noting mind or the observing mind takes the most prominent object. So when physical phenomenon is arising prominently, then the mind takes it as its object and observes it as it is. When any kind of a feeling or sensation, either pleasant or unpleasant or neutral, <clears throat> is arising predominantly, then the mind takes the feeling as the, its object and observe it as, <clears throat> as it really occurs. When the consciousness is predominantly arising at that moment, 
then the mind takes the predominant consciousness as its object and observe it as it is. <clears throat> when any of a phenomena, such as uh, hindrances, uh, aggregates, and fetters, or the truths, arise them predominantly, the mind takes any of these things as the object of meditation and observe it as it really occurs. So we cannot choose any object as our meditation. <clears throat> Whatever predominantly arising, whatever predominantly arises, is the object of vipassana meditation, insight meditation, and mindfulness meditation. <clears throat> so, here I clarify this is a technique of mindfulness as taught by the Buddha in his discourse of Mahasri Patana Sutra. <clears throat> so that some of the beginner or those who come late <clears throat> can understand the technique very well. So the principle is to be mindful of whatever arises in our body and mind, either physical process or feeling or sensation or consciousness or any kind of phenomena. <clears throat> We are not able to observe <clears throat> the any physical any any object which is a predominant in the beginning of the practice. So the most venerable Mahasiyaro, the late venerable Mahasiyaro teaches as a disciple to start with the rising movement and falling movement of the abdomen because the movements of the abdomen is it so to say about present as long as a person is alive. So long as the person is alive, he has to breathe in and then breathe out. When he breathes in, the abdominal expands or moves outward. When he breathes out, the abdomen is contracting and moves inward. But the movement of the abdomen <coughs> depends on a meditator's physical composite, composite. So sometimes some of a meditator find the movement as inward movement and outward movement. Some meditator find it movement as upward movement and downward movements. Occasionally some meditators find the movement as <clears throat> the the move moves round and round. But whatever it may be, meditator must observe <clears throat> 
the movement as it really occurs. Either inward, outward movements or downward, upward movement. Whatever it may be, it must be observed, it must be noted as it really occurs. The movement here is wired to an element. Wired to an element is one of the four primary material element, which must be thoroughly realized by a meditator. That's why we have to observe, we have to mindful of in what movements, outward movement or upward movement or downward movements of the abdomen. In the beginning of the practice, for some meditator, <clears throat> there may arise a difficulty to find the the movements distinct. So he may make his breath quick or vigorous so that he can find movements very clearly and distinctly, but he must not do it so. Because if he do this, in a short time he becomes tired. Because vigorous and quick movements of the abdomen is unnatural. The movements of the abdomen must be natural. So the breathing, it also must be natural. <clears throat> when, he, when a meditator observes the movement of the abdomen, how so soft it may be, or how faint it may be. If we observe it attentively enough, he finds some degree of a movement. He observes it as much as possible. Later on, when his concentration becomes deeper, then he will be able to see the movement very clearly and distinctly. So the, move, the breathing must be normal and the movement as also should be normal. <clears throat> To what you what you need is to have the five mental faculties ever strong, sharp and kept in balance. What are the five mental faculties? The first one is Sadda, confidence in triple gems, Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. <clears throat> Especially in the technique of the meditation you are practicing now, that's the Dhamma. This is Sadda. Confidence must be firm and strong enough. If a Sadda, confidence in the Buddha, his teaching, and the order of uh, Bhikkhu's Sangha, 
their meditator put forth enough effort in his practice. Without strong, firm confidence in the triple gems, meditator may not put forth enough effort in the practice. With a firm confidence, meditator put forth strenuous effort in the noting or the observing of phenomena. He watch, he watches or observes the object attentively, mental states, either mental states or physical process. Attentively, if he puts forth enough effort in the practice, he is able to observe each object attentively enough. If any object is noted lightly and superficially, it's not useful. When any mental stress or physical process is observed lightly and superficially, the mind goes out very often, wonders and thinks about something else. Meditator cannot concentrate well on the object. So meditator needs to have attentiveness observing each object very attentively. To observe or to be mindful of, attentively he needs enough effort. That effort or energy is called viriya in Pali. This effort is also one of the five mental faculties. When the mental effort or energy is enough, meditator can observe whatever arises, either mental states or physical process. <clears throat> attentively, he will be able to be mindful of whatever arises in his body and mind as it is. By being mindful of any mental states of physical process, as it really occurs for the whole days, <clears throat> without a break, then mindfulness becomes gradually continuous and constant and sustained. When the mindfulness becomes a constant and continuous, it becomes a powerful. Then the powerful mindfulness gives rise to deep concentration. This mindfulness is also one of the five mental faculties. This faculty is very much important. He is the source of uh, realization or right understanding of Phenomena. When the mindfulness becomes continuous and constant to some extent, then it gives rise to deep concentration. The concentration of mind is also one of the five mental faculties. <clears throat> concentration 
of three types. Upachara Samadhi, Access Concentration. Apana Samadhi, Absorption Concentration. Or Jhana Concentration. Kanika Samadhi, Momentary Concentration. By means of a samatha meditation, meditator can attain either upachara samadhi, excess concentration, or apana samadhi, absorption concentration, or both. But vipassana meditator is not able to attain both out of these concentration, access and uh, absorption concentration. Vipassana meditator, inside meditator, attains Kanika Samadhi, momentary concentration, because he doesn't take a single object to a meditation. He takes many varieties of mental states and physical process as the object of meditation. So it is my stay with one object momentarily when that object has disappeared. It takes another object and stay with it momentarily. Then another object, this object passed away, and then another object rises, then it takes another object momentarily in this way. The mind, the noted mind, the observing mind, concentrate, is concentrated on any individual object for a moment. That's why it's called momentary concentration, kanika samadhi. But this is a kanika samadhi, momentary concentration. When it becomes a continuous and constant, it has a very powerful strength which can overcome hindrances and defilements. So the sub-commentary to Visuddhi Magga said, Kanika Samadhi, momentary concentration, when it becomes constant and continuous, has the equal strength with upajara samadhi, excess concentration, and samatha meditation. So it can overcome or remove hindrances and mental defilements. To make this momentary concentration Deepening what we need is to have a continuous mindfulness observing whatever arises in our body mind as it is. Mind, when mindfulness becomes continuous, concentration also become, con becomes continuous and constant then this concentration has a great deal of strength to expel or to overcome, to remove five kinds of hindrances and ten kinds of mental defilements. So this concentration is also one of the eight mental factors, mental faculties. 
<coughs> then when the mind is well concentrated on any mental state or physical process, <coughs> there arises insight, the intuitive insight into any mental states or physical process which is observed. and realizes it in its true nature. This is vipassana jnana, we call it, inside knowledge. This insight is called panya, lokiya panya. <coughs> Is one of a mental, uh, one of a five mental faculties, panya. But <clears throat> panya has the two types. One is the insight knowledge that realizes. Impermanent, suffering, impersonal nature of mental and physical phenomena. It's called vipassana panya. When we have completely attained all the stages of insight knowledge, realizing <clears throat> any mental states of physical process more and more clearly. Then we come to attain to enlightenment, maganyana, path knowledge, and planyana, fruition knowledge. These enlightenments are also called panya, Lokutra Panya, Loki pan, Lokiya Panya is translated into mundane wisdom or mundane Panya. Lokutra Panya is translated into supramundane Panya, supramundane wisdom. So Lokiya Panya, Vipassana Panya, inside knowledge, realizes the, the specific characteristics of phenomena and general characteristic of phenomena. Every mental state and physical process has its own specific characteristics. And they have general characteristics. Three kinds of general characteristics which are in common with all mental states and physical processes. So the Lokiya Panya Supra Mundane Wisdom or Inside Knowledge realizes both specific characteristics and general characteristics of mental and physical phenomena. But Lokodra Panya Subramandri, wisdom, enlightenment, realizes the Four Noble Truths, the truth of the suffering, the truth of the cause of the suffering, the truth of the cessation of the suffering, 
the truth of the way leading to the cessation of a suffering. Both mundane wisdom and supramundane wisdom are insight, knowledge and enlightenment are mental five mental faculties. These twin penetrating knowledge are called panya, one of the five mental faculties. <clears throat> <clears throat> So, meditator must be endowed with these five mental faculties. In other words, these five mental faculties are the properties of a meditator. Every, each and every mental faculties should be sharp and powerful. Confident Sadda is the basic requirement. Unless a Sadda, confidence of faith in the technique of Vipassana meditation, Meditator won't put enough effort in the practice. Only sadha confidence is strong enough. <clears throat> he put strenuous effort in the practice. But sometimes when meditator has experienced some stages of insight knowledge. Then he is happy. He has a great deal of pleasure. At that moment, some meditators have a great deal of confidence in the teaching of the Buddha. Through his own personal experience, then he has to think about his friends, his relatives, his parents, his sons and daughters. He would like all of these people to experience them. <clears throat> this Dharma through their own personal experience. Then he comes to think about how can persuade them to practice this meditation. How can they have opportunity to get this meditation, to experience the Dhamma, to enjoy the Dhamma? In this way, because of uh, a strong sadha, he is a thing about the welfare of his, the people concerned. Then <clears throat> his concentration is broken. What should he do? Should he reduce his confidence or sadha? No, he can't. Because his sadha arises not by learning or not by listening to Dhamma, but by his personal experience of meditation. So he can reduce his sadha. Then what should he do? 
it's uh, easy, not uh, very difficult. But sometimes the meditators forget <clears throat> this technique. As you know, the principle of vipassana meditation is to be mindful of whatever arises in your mind and body as it really occurs. So when any thought comes up, you observe it, thinking, thinking, thinking. When you have any desire to help your friends <clears throat> experience this Dhamma, the desire must be noted as a desire, 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 until the desire has disappeared. Sometimes some of a meditator feel sad about their departed parents. My parents <clears throat> did not practice this meditation and did not realize the Dhamma, did not experience such things. In this way, uh, he may cry over the death of his parents. There also, he should observe thinking, thinking, thinking. If he feels sad, 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 until the sadness has disappeared. Meditation, either Samatha meditation or Vipassana meditation, is mental training, mental culture, mental development, or the work of the mind. It, the, the work of the mind, in the work of the mind, it, to note to observe the mind is much more important than any other things. So whatever mind or mental state arises, whatever emotional state arises, meditator must observe it attentively, energetically, somewhat quickly. Then that mental state will uh, pass away. As I told you, when the sadness arises, sadness must be observed. As it said, 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 said. Noting it as it said, said, said. Without noting or labeling, being aware of the feeling of sadness is not enough because it's a very light and superficial. It's a not deep enough. The noting and the labeling helps the mind to focus the feeling of sadness more precisely. Then he comes to realize that sadness is a nothing but a mental state. Then sadness has passed away. In this way, whatever mental states or emotional states may be, must be observed without failure. When he thinks about his friends or his parents, he must observe it. If he is about to cry over the death of her parents, note crying, 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 <clears throat> until the feeling has disappeared. Updated Zebia, he should return to the primary object that's the rising, falling movement of the abdomen. <clears throat> Sometimes a meditator may feel lazy or reluctant to practice. That laziness and reluctantness must be observed as it is. It must be mindful of, attentively and precisely, 
as it really occurs, then that laziness will go away. If he does not observe the laziness, the laziness becomes stronger and stronger. Then he doesn't want to continue his practice. At that moment, his concentration is broken. There is no mindfulness at all. Then he is not a yogi. Yogi or meditator is all the time mindful of all actions and movements, all mental states and physical process. Only the mindfulness makes a person a yogi. If there is no mindfulness, he is not a yogi. At the moment, a meditator <clears throat> misses the mindfulness, then he has no mindfulness at all. At that time he is not yogi. It can be said that yogi is a dead. Yes, the yogi is a dead, though he is a walking. Hmm? Why? The life of a, a yogi is a mindfulness. Mindfulness is the life of a, a yogi. If there is no mindfulness, there is no life in him. Then he is dead. Though he is walking or though he is eating his lunch or breakfast, if he is not mindful of <clears throat> anything, then he is dead. Then we saw the dead person eating is eating at the breakfast table. <clears throat> not the dead person, the dead yogi. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> meditator must be mindful of all, all the time. Any mental state which is arising at that moment, any physical process which is arising at that moment, from moment to moment he must be mindful of all any mental states or physical process, as it really occurs. <clears throat> In this way, his mindfulness becomes a continuous and constant. Then, for the whole day, he doesn't die. He is all the time alive with mindfulness. <clears throat> So this mindfulness is mental work, mental training, mental culture. It's a very, very much important. And also it has <clears throat> unbelievable power to change a personality, to change a mental attitude, to change a disposition. As a meditator experiences um, <clears throat> the uh, as meditator have uh, higher and higher experiences in uh, meditation, then his mind changes uh, into <clears throat> Better and better, uh, yes, better for better experience. With the mind changed, and with the experience changed, the attitude and the disposition also changed for betterment. <clears throat> so 
this mindfulness, uh, sati, one of the five mental faculty, cannot be set to exceed. But that sadha, as I told you, confidence and the teaching sometimes uh, may be too strong so that meditators has no mindfulness at all and thinks about something else. But at that time, sadha cannot be reduced, but <clears throat> sadha should be kept in balance with the panya, wisdom. Here, wisdom is both inside knowledge and knowledge of theoretical knowledge of Dhamma. If I have too much confidence, I'll be go astray. So I should not have had too much sadha confidence. This is not the time for me to enjoy this is sadha or to indulge in this is sadha. What I should do is uh, to continue to be mindful of uh, whatever arises uh, and body and mind. Only this is uh, the right way for me to make a progress in my meditation. In this way, reflecting upon disadvantage of uh, too much sadha and the benefit advantage of Viriya Siddhi Samadhi. Uh, we can keep Sada in balance with Panya. And we can check Sada. Then we are able to go with our meditation, concentrating well on the Ojo to meditation, whatever arises. <clears throat> In this way, sadha should be kept in balance. Though sadha is necessary to be firm and strong enough, but it must not be too much. <clears throat> in the same way, viriya, energy or effort, is needed to be strong enough, is tenuous enough. But sometimes we are maybe too much, too strong or stronger than concentration. It's also not the desirable thing. We are energy must be kept in concentration, <clears throat> imbalance. When, sometimes when meditators has too much sadha, he put too much effort in the practice. He doesn't want to even sleep at night. He wants to continue his practice for the whole night and the whole day. In this way he may have too much effort or energy. Then he can concentrate well on his meditation. <clears throat> it's the object of meditation. He can concentrate well because uh, he, because of uh, too much effort, he becomes uh, rest, restless. When he he becomes becomes rest, restless, he his mind is not well concentrated on the object of meditation. <clears throat> but there are, uh, but it's a very rare to find 
such a meditator with too much effort. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we we should not worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> we should not worry about it. <clears throat> Only f what we have to do is to push meditation, push, push all the time, <laughs> to be aware of all daily activities in uh, more and more detail, <clears throat> to note or to observe any mental state which is wondering or thinking, imagining, playing, and so on. <clears throat> Sometimes the meditator is lazy. Though he has thoughts and also he is realize it, but he is lazy to note it. Then he doesn't note thinking, thinking, wondering, wondering. Just see it, look at it as it is. Then the mind goes out uh, keeps uh, going on very, very long, say, two minds or three minds, and so on. That laziness must be noted. <clears throat> laziness or any mental state, good or bad, when it's noted, it, it's going. But the noting should be attentive enough, attentive and precise enough. <clears throat> yes, when the meditator has too much effort or too strong effort, sometimes we have to <clears throat> instruct him to note few objects, not many objects. If he is observed, say, rising, falling, sitting, touching, four objects, he has to note only two objects, rising, falling, calmly, steadily. And uh, in the walk into when he observe, say, the six or the seven parts of the staff. He has to reduce two, three or two parts, say, lifting, pushing, dropping, or left and right. <clears throat> Some meditators, with too much effort, become so restless, then he can't stay <clears throat> and a place um, far from his mind is a concentrate uh, from the concentration. Such a meditator, we have to instruct them to stop practicing meditation and to do some works, some cleaning works or uh, any other works. <clears throat> but. Uh, as I told you, it's a very rare to find a, such a <coughs> meditator, so we wor we need not worry about it. Sometimes um, the concentration is too deep. Though meditator, his mind is concentrated very well. He feel happy, peaceful, but he doesn't realize anything. There's two reasons. One reason is that he is pleased with his concentration. He has no desire or no tendency to realize any mental state or physical process. That tendency to enjoy the deep concentration 
is one of the reason why he cannot realize any mental states of physical process. <clears throat> but the other reason is because the mind is very deeply concentrated into a object of meditation, it's unable to realize any mental states of physical process. Sometimes <clears throat> too deep concentration makes the mind the very awkward position. When meditators has a tendency to believe and superstition such as a ghost or yaka or any other undesirable invisible things if he believes and takes interest in it. That deep concentration create this thing because of his tendency, then he may be uh, afraid of um, these things. So, sometimes, but it's also very rare. What's happened is when the concentration is too deep, meditate as an effort becomes weaker and weaker because uh, though he doesn't put effort in the noting, the concentration, the mind is uh, concentrated very well. So gradually his uh, effort becomes weaker and weaker. Later on, the effort is uh, very, very weak. When the effort or energy is weak, the mind can't be concentrated well on the object, so it gets into sleepiness, sloth and topper. Because, because of the lack of effort, the concentrated mind becomes sluggish and heavy then it changes into sleepiness and sloth and topper. <clears throat> then in this case, meditator has to put more effort in the practice, note more and more objects, <clears throat> so that his mind becomes alert, more active and alert. In this way, too much concentration should be kept in balance with the effort. But <clears throat> this a correction uh, of uh, the five mental faculties in a meditator is uh, done by his teacher. If the meditator is not skilled in correcting his five mental faculties or keeping it in balance. The meditator, the teacher knows this meditator has too much sada or too much wisdom or this meditator too much concentration or too much effort and so on. Then meditate, the, the teacher can correct him making him keep balance and the, the balance, his five mental faculties and balance. <clears throat> so the most important thing is uh, to have a firm and strong confidence in the teaching of the Buddha and the technique of meditation. And uh, to have a constant and continuous mindfulness for the whole day. 
may all of you rightly understand these five mental faculties and try your best to be mindful of every mental state of physical process without failure as long as you are awake and attain the cessation of suffering nibbana.